Hey everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. So guys, today I have a small Christmas gift for you. I am going to show you my full watch collection. It grew so much over the last two years that it fills already two boxes and a watch roll. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First, we have a look at my small G-Shock collection. Three pieces actually, one of them is this transparent G Oak, which I got as a present from one of my best friends here in Dubai. Definitely a nice piece that got hyped a bit too much, so now nearly everyone has one. But still, I think it's quite a special G Shock, so I like to have it in my collection. Then we have my GM5600B in the green camo. A square metal case, resin strap and some nice green DD pad on the dial. The watch is definitely a bargain as you can usually grab it for around 150 bucks on Amazon and this would also be my advice if you want a cheap but nice quality G-Shock go for this GM5600B. And the last G-Shock is my G-Oak in the bubblegum design. I bought this watch second hand as it was sold out for a long time and quite hard to find. I love the color combination of pink, purple and white. Such a strong 80s flair that this watch has. Definitely my favorite G-Shock right now that you can find out there in the market and I will probably never sell this piece again. Moving on, we have my little big Casio collection. A calculator watch, several special editions of the A168, two GMT A500 watches and a few more A158, all the way to the F91W. Definitely, I think I have an addiction for these pieces. And I also love to wear them during travels. So basically whenever I feel I want to wear a cheap but quality watch, I go to take one of these Casio watches. For the small price, these are amazing bargains and you can also always use them as a nice present to a friend. Now we come to the business class. So my expensive watches, which are still somehow affordable, but make the entry into serious watch collecting. First piece is a more of a memorable piece, my Zeppelin Duo Face GMT, the watch I bought for my diploma around 11 years ago. It still works fine, just needs a battery change. And yeah, as you can see on the lever, there is some serious patina already on the watch and also on the strap, which makes it very special to me. <clears throat> the watch also reminds me of appreciating everything I got in my life. The time I bought it, uh, it cost less than 200 euro. And at the time that was basically the maximum I could afford. And for me, the ultimate luxury to buy this watch. So guys, never forget where you come from. This can only help you in life. Moving on, we have the Timex Q UAE Limited Edition. That day the watch was announced, everyone from our watch club rushed to the Timex store to grab one for around $250. <clears throat> Definitely a cool piece, especially if you live in the UAE. This piece will also stay as my UAE watch in the watch collection and should show that I am grateful for all the opportunities that this country gives me. Next, my Apple Watch Series 7. Um, I don't think there's much to say. I know a few people will probably hate uh, that I have this watch in my watch collection and that I also show it in my collection update, but for me it is still a watch and it's definitely uh, one of the most important watches that were released over the last years as this watch helps so many people to take care of their health better. So for me it's a sports device or you could also say an activity tracker on top. 
Moving on, we have the Seiko Baby Tuna in the Arctic design. A special edition to remind us for a more sustainable and environment friendly lifestyle. I'm not using this watch that much, but a collectible piece for sure. So I don't know, maybe I will sell it or give it away in the future to make some space in the watch box or maybe it stays uh, until something else will come. I don't know yet, but definitely a nice piece. Next we have my Namoki Mods watch build. I made this watch together with one of my friends and built it completely out of parts. The design is inspired from the Rolex GMT Master, Submariner and Yacht Master. I love this mother of pearl dial and the black ceramic bezel, gives it definitely a superb design. Here is my Seiko Captain Willard, an epic movie that you probably all know. I paid around $1200 for this piece and I actually use it a lot. The strap already has some kind of patina on it. As you can see, yeah, I really use it a lot. Whenever I feel like I don't want to go with a luxury watch, but I want to have a mechanical watch on my wrist, this is usually my go-to piece. The watch also has a super quality, super tough and will run for days with its 70 hours of power reserve. So I must admit, the Willard is amazing and everyone who wants an amazing or epic Seiko, I can only advise you get a Captain Willard. Next we have my Mido 1961 decompression timer, we could say the OG. This watch was released in 2020 as a limited edition to 1961 pieces. A bit of a race to get one in Dubai but in the end I made it and I love this watch ever since. It always brings me good mood with the colorful dial, it is pretty unique, I think I never saw anyone wearing one and the dimensions are great for my wrist size. The water resistance of 200 meters makes this again a tough watch for daily usage. So definitely an awesome piece and again this also gets a lot of wrist time. Next we have the second Mido 1961 decompression timer from my watch collection. The 2021 version with a silver dial and turquoise bezel. I put this one on the lever strap to get a bit of to get a bit of variety in my collection. Only from the looks this piece I think is even better than the OG, but I connected more to the black version as I bought it during some tough times. And that definitely created a bond between the OG Mido 1961 and me. So this new piece is still waiting for that and also it is a bit sad that in Dubai actually none of them were available for sales from our local off rice dealer for Mido. So maybe they, maybe, or I'm pretty sure they got a few, but in the end they only sold them to super duper VIP customers. So I know from our watch club, for example, no one actually got one of these pieces from the local uh, retailer. So yeah, a good example at what stage we are now in watch collecting. Next we have the Tudor Black Bay 58 Blue on NATO strap. I bought this piece just two months ago and used it a few times since then. Not the most exciting piece but a good value for money for sure. If you own a Rolex Amarna it will be hard to connect to this piece I guess. I somehow always prefer to put a Rolex on the wrist. Anyway good to have a Tudor in the collection and overall as I said this is a really good value for money piece and a good entry into luxury watches. And my last piece that travels today with us on the business class is the Breitling R Aerospace Evo Blue Dial, one of my latest acquisitions. Great value for money, a lovely fit on the wrist and the two digital displays on, on the analog one are pretty unique. Also one of the last pieces uh, of the great Breitling area in my view that you can still buy today without big design changes. So a real professional Breitling for me, yeah, which is super masculine, has the Wings logo on it, a big wrist presence, is super tough and has some great functionality with it. So this is what a Breitling should be in my view, 
And that's why I also love this piece and had to get one for my collection. And now guys, we come to the first class. So all my super expensive watches that I collected over the last two years. First, we have the new Omega Speedmaster Sapphire Sandwich. Uh, many uh, people complained about the price increase and that there would be basically no changes to the watch. For me, actually, Omega did a perfect job. They kept everything which was good about the Speedmaster and removed the flaws. We now have a super comfortable bracelet that tapers. The milky ring is gone on the Sapphire Sandwich version and the dial looks more clean. On top, the watch is a tad thinner and the crown more grippy. So for me, all these uh, minor flaws the old version had are removed and by that this is the ultimate Omega to get now in my view. And I also believe this is still great value for money. So if you want to get a watch that is basically available right away and delivers you superb quality and lots of features and an epic history, yeah, definitely get an Omega Speedmaster. You will be super happy with it. I'm 100% sure about that. Next, we have my Zenith DeFi Classic Skeleton. This piece joined the collection in 2020 and is since then a very special piece in my collection. Unfortunately, I don't use it that often as I don't get the perfect fit on the wrist for it. And I asked Zenith a million times already for a half link. I actually even asked the CEO of Zenith when he was here in Dubai, but I yeah, somehow lost trust that they will ever deliver a half link. So probably in the future I might have to exchange this watch for maybe a new DeFi Classic if they relaunch it, which comes with either a micro adjustment, uh, easy extension or has a quick release to change the bracelet to straps. And yeah, I always also say this is a bit of a pity as the bracelet is definitely the highlight of this watch. I mean, look at it. It looks so good, it gives you bling, it is finished in a superb uh, way. So yeah, there's not much that this watch is not doing 100% right. It's just that for my wrist, I don't know, it just doesn't fit perfectly and I hate watches that do not sit perfectly on the wrist. Anyway, uh, form should follow function, so I said, let's see if Zenith can somehow fix this flaw. I will definitely be super happy with this piece as well. Here's my uh, Rolex Datejust 126233 with the blue dial and oyster bracelet. <clears throat> a pretty sporty version of the Datejust. I had a chance to buy this one a few months ago, so of course I grabbed the chance to get it. One of my friends was lusting for my old Datejust 36 and this guy is also a member of our watch club. So uh, um, yeah, for my Datejust 36 on the Jubilee, uh, you probably all remember, uh, which I had for a few years now. And so I basically made a swap. I gave my old Datejust 36 for a lot less than the current retail price as it was also heavily used to my friend from the watch club and I picked up this piece uh, from the authorized dealer. So I guess in the end everyone was happy. My friend got a nice uh, Rolex uh, on the Jubilee bracelet which he wanted below retail price and I got a new uh, version of it uh, on the Oyster bracelet which will fit my watch collection. What you will see soon uh, much better, yeah? As I have so many Jubilee bracelets already in the collection. So yeah, in the end I think everyone was happy and that's how I got this watch into my collection. And anyway, uh, my old uh, Datejust 36 was pretty beaten up, had a lot of scratches and so on. So I would have might polished it, uh, but in the end I also thought, yeah, it's the better way to buy a new piece, which helps my profile at the dealer and sell my old piece without doing the service to my friend. So yeah, also the more economic version. Next, we have my Rolex Explorer 39 mm the first Rolex I ever bought. I got this piece in early 2019 from the display from a dealer. Uh, pretty good buy at the time with basically no knowledge 
about watches at all and I nearly uh, stepped into the trap of buying yeah, like a bridling with an ETA movement inside but in the end luckily I listened to my uh, passion for mountains and that's how I decided to get the Rolex Explorer and bought this piece and yeah I couldn't be any happier with the watch. I also use it a lot, it gets a lot of wrist time and now as this piece is discontinued yeah the prices are also shooting up so now it's pretty tough to get this watch. So I definitely bought it at the right time and if I wouldn't have picked it up in 2019 I would have probably never gotten this piece in my whole life. And here we have my first two-tone Rolex, so the Datejust 36mm on Jubilee bracelet with fluted bezel and motif dial, so one of the new uh, dials Rolex just released in 2021. Definitely a beautiful piece, my favorite dial that Rolex offers at the moment for the two-tone watches and I think it just looks awesome. Yeah, I always wanted to have a two-tone watch with yellow gold which is in my view so epic because of all the movies where it was used or all the famous persons who were wearing this watch so it definitely gives you somehow a mighty feeling if you have it on your wrist and it's also cool that it's reflecting a bit the dark side of rolex so yeah i don't know i could go on forever but i just love this piece and i wanted to have it for so long and yeah when i got the opportunity uh, yeah, just a bit back this year, so um, yeah, I couldn't think twice. I just pulled the trigger right away and finally got it. Moving on, we have the Rolex Bad Girl, one of my, let's say, holy free watches until now. Yeah, as it's one of the super, super, super expensive watches that I own. And I must say, uh, I start to like this piece more and more as it has such a different vibe compared to my Pepsi. Uh, and also the Jubilee bracelet again is the best and most comfortable bracelet in the market. On top it's robust, it has a GMT function, has a epic history this watch, everyone loves the bad girl. So yeah, of course I couldn't be any happier than having this watch also in my collection. Moving on we have the Rolex Submariner Kermit which I bought also earlier this year in 2021. Another trip all around the world to pick up this piece, but in the end it was definitely worth it. The green bezel looks fantastic and gives the collection more color and I think I don't need to add a lot to the Rolex Amerna. As you all know, it's one of the most famous watches ever made and everyone who can get one should go for it. As you can see, there is no more black sub in my collection as I gave this one a few days back, a few days ago to my dad. If you want to see the full event, check out the video uh, giving a Rolex Submariner to my dad on my YouTube channel. Definitely a super awesome event and thank you again for everyone who was involved in that. And will I add another Black Sub to my collection? Um, for sure, I'm already missing my old Black Sub, but I always thought like it would be cool to have a no date in addition to the Kermit. And yeah, so I hope one day I might have the chance to get a no date sub then. And last but not least, my favorite watch of all times, the watch for which I basically went through hell to acquire one, the Rolex Pepsi. This piece still gives me goosebumps every time I wear it and has the absolute perfect design, fit and function. I use this watch a lot. It is actually the most used piece from my collection, yeah. Whenever I go out, I put the Pepsi on my wrist, I can tell you guys. There is no other watch in my collection that gets so much wrist time. And of course by that it got so many scratches already, especially on the clasp, that it basically already formed its own character. So whenever I go to a collector's meeting and there are a few Pepsis, I immediately recognize mine because of the scratches on the clasp. And do I regret wearing it so much as this watch is like so high in second hand value? I can tell you again, not a single second. Wearing this watch gives you so much joy. It's worth every single scratch it collects while you wear it. I can only tell you guys. And I can also tell you this piece will never leave my collection. Actually, I hope one day I can pass it on to my children 
with a beautiful story behind it. So actually it would be funny, yeah? Imagine in, I don't know, 20 years or so, I'll hand it over to my son or so, and he can actually check the YouTube video in which I pick it up. I guess that must be an awesome moment for him. And yeah, with that we have it. This is my full watch collection, stayed December 2021. The full collection has a value of around $140,000. Considering I gave the Submariner date to my dad, it made a big jump from 2020. And yeah, so guys, I hope you enjoyed this update. Drop me a comment what you think about my watch collection, which watches you think are a must buy for 2022. Stay healthy, enjoy the holidays and see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and bye bye.